Hi everyone, this is the Chess Goals Karo Khan course, Chapter 8. We are going to be looking at what's called the Fantasy Variation. Uh, one thing that, we were, that we're adding for this chapter that we uh, got feedback on Discord is we're going to talk about some different themes this chapter. Uh, so there's three key themes that we'll be highlighting. In the first five lines, we're going to be looking at an isolated E4 pawn for white. In the next four lines, there's going to be uh, some weak dark squares around white's king, especially the F2 square. And then in the 10th and final line, uh, we'll be looking at sort of a transposition to the exchange caro, except white will have played f3, which will sort of weaken those dark squares again around white's king. So Jesse, do you want to uh, kick us off with the first line? Yeah, sure. So we have our normal uh, caro con moves. Um, we have covered e5, knight c3, uh, the exchange variation, uh, other knight moves, knight d2. Um, so what's left here, next popular move, and pretty much this will wrap up everything you're going to see, um, is F3. So as Matt said, this is the fantasy variation. And um, sticking with kind of the theme of the chapter, we're going to, or not theme of the chapter, theme of the course, is we're going to play aggressively and we're going to put the onus on white to say, to ask them how they're going to deal with our threats. So we're going to kick the queen out to b6 right away. We're going to keep our eye on these weak pawns and kind of disturb the development of the dark square bishop. Um, from here, we're going to look at four different moves. Um, so this is going to be a big branching point for the whole chapter. Um, I am looking at my opening database, I have the club level, or no, I'm looking at the master's database, actually. And after queen b6, oh, yeah, sorry. So after queen b6, black is scoring incredibly well. They have almost half wins, of, and then about a quarter losses and a quarter draws. So even at the master level, this game, or this move is very strong. Um, do you have the club level database up? Yeah, I'm seeing a 49% uh, winning for black and I think it was 44% 45% for white so not as strong as the master level but this is the strongest move at the club level still and I think this is one of the reasons I chose this line because I wanted something a bit offbeat uh, make white feel uncomfortable but also we want something that scores well in practice because when we see f3 on move 3 already we know that our opponent is going to be pretty well prepared with this system so every time they face a caro they're going for this fantasy variation. And if we're not well prepared for this, uh, the reason it's called the fantasy variation is because if we just take e4 and play something passive, white gets really nice development with this big center that Jesse was highlighting. And um, already white has a big advantage. They're going to castle kingside, put the rook on this half open f file. And it's up to us to try to figure out how to fight back in the center. So when we see f3, Fantasy variation, we know our opponent's ready for that. Um, and we're going to try to put the game in our court by playing queen b6. An offbeat move, but also pretty aggressive. Um, so like Jesse mentioned, we have four moves here we're looking at. And we'll start with the most popular, knight to c3. And in these lines, we're going to be um, primarily looking at lines where white has an isolated queen. Or isolated e pawn, sorry. Not isolated queen pawn. Isolated pawn on e4. So that's going to be the theme. Um, so here we're going to take e4, f takes back, and now we immediately strike at the center e5. So with this e5 push, we're hitting the d4 pawn, but also look at our queen on b6, cutting across the diagonal to f2. So we can see that already these dark squares along the diagonal are potentially weak for white, in addition to their weak pawn on e4. Yep, exactly. So a lot of the times, uh, I guess in this exact position, there's not a great way or a harmonious way for white to deal with this tension. Normally you either want to push or take if you want to deal with the tension, but in both cases that really opens up this diagonal and now white is unable to castle. So instead, uh, white is going to play a nice developing move, knight f3. And um, yeah, Oops, here we here we take. Yeah, but I didn't try to scroll ahead, scroll ahead there. So <laughs> here we're going to take and leave white with the isolated king's pawn. Yes. Yeah, so now we have two options for white. Queen takes d4, and knight takes d4. 
Uh, queen takes d4 is the most popular. And after this move, we're going to recommend going straight into an endgame. Um, we don't always recommend going into endgames, but here, because of the isolated pawn on e4, um, I feel that we have a very small pole and a very easy position to play. And if we don't trade queens, I think white's having more fun than us because white has a lot of center control. So uh, one way to combat the center control is to get the queens off the board. Now at this point, white has two extra minor pieces out. So we need to develop quickly. And this is a good move to remember. Here I'm recommending bishop to c5. Uh, the reason I like this move is because it immediately hits this knight on d5, on d4. And that allows us to develop with just a bit extra tempi. So this is probably the only move that I would say is a little bit critical in this line. Just remember to get that bishop out first. Yep, and so um, one reason I like going into the end game here is rule kind of 101 of an isolated pawn is they're weak in the end game. So the more you can trade down, um, the easier game you're gonna have. So imagine all the minor pieces are off the board. You can just march your king right up and uh, White's king is going to be babysitting this pawn all day. So we're happy with trades here, and um, I, yeah, I like this move quickly developing. So we're at another branching point. Um, White is going to play bishop e3, but first we will look at knight b3, so retreating and kind of counterattacking our bishop. Yeah, and this is the most popular move, knight b3, uh, but the problem with knight b3 for White is the knight on b3 doesn't have any good future prospects, so it doesn't really sit sit well out there on b3. Um, so even though it's the most popular move, it's actually a, a bit of an inaccuracy. So what we can do here is tuck the bishop back to d6, and he's now looking at coming to the e5 square later. And from here, this bishop points across both diagonals, but he could also tuck back on c7 if we want the e5 square for a knight. So bishop to d6, very flexible move. Uh, now let's give white a natural develop, developing move, bishop e3, knight f6. And here the plan for us is to castle, bring this knight to d7, and then to e5. And if this bishop on d6 gets attacked, we can tuck him back on c7. So we have this very compact position. Everything is solid. We have no pawn weaknesses. Uh, there's no entry points for a white rook to come in on the d file. And we're blockading this white pawn on e4. And what we're going to do after we blockade it is just start to increase the pressure. Bring all the pieces around the e pawn. And at that point, it's going to make it very difficult for white to find good moves. And uh, what we're hoping is that we can eventually crack them in this endgame and get them to make a mistake. Yep, and uh, I think I say this every single video, but uh, we are always going to leave you with a plan at the end of each line, so you can see in the comments on the side um, just where we want to place our pieces. So white is probably going to castle here, so obviously don't just autopilot the knight move because we have a bishop hanging, but we kind of just give you a feel for how to handle the position. Um, anytime you see an isolated pawn, you should probably thinking think about blockading it or uh, putting a knight as an outpost there. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, we we are very comfortable in this position, and at the highest level, you may even say it's a two-result position. But <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not quite a twenty-eight hundred. Yeah, we're not we're not that confident. 